Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number 18 from the specimen paper for the new syllabus of 2023. Oh, sorry, 2025 uh, for the IGCSE Cambridge 0580 non-calculator paper 2. Now, this question here is about functions and there's really no difference between this question and the previous syllabus at all. There's not any really need for any calculator in this question anyway. So this question here is basically, as I mentioned, functions. And we are asked first to find f negative 3. Now what this means is we take the function f. So we have got to look for the function f, which is this function over here. And the x in this function here this x in this function here, wherever you see the x in the function, you replace with negative 3. So f negative 3 is basically going to be 3 minus 2 times negative 3. Now be very careful about signs. 3, now you have minus 2 times minus 3, which is plus 6. So 3 plus 6, and that's going to give us 9. So there's your answer to part 1, a part 1. Now, a part do, 2 says find g f of minus 3. Okay, and you'll notice we already actually found f of minus 3. So that part we know already, all right? We know f of minus 3. So basically what this, this is telling us to do is to take the, the value that we found of f minus 3 and put it inside the function g this time. So now we're going to look at this function, function g. And that's what we're going to focus on. So we, now we have to replace inside function g what f of minus 3 is, which we already know is 9. So basically we've got to find um, g of 9. So that means we got to replace the x in this function. Wherever we see x, it was replaced with 9. So instead of 2 times x, it's 2 times 9 plus 3, which is going to be 18, plus 3, which is 21. Okay, so that, that's pretty simple, part A and 2. But part A1, uh, A part 1 and A part 2. Now for part B, it says find the inverse of function f. Okay, so we need to know what function f is. Function f is 3 minus 2x. I'm going to write it as y equals 3 minus 2x. And when we are finding the inverse of a function, basically what we're doing is we're switching around the x and the y. So the x takes the place of the y, and the y takes the place of the x. And now we want to make y the subject. When we make y the subject of this, we will then have found the inverse. So we can add 2y to both sides and take away x from both sides. I like to deal with that in that way because I want to make the term uh, which I'm making the subject, I want it to be a positive term. That's why I, I personally would, instead of subtracting 3 from both sides, I would add 2y two, two to both sides and at the same time subtract x from both sides. That leaves me with uh, the y with a positive coefficient so y is then going to be 3 minus x over 2 so that is the inverse function the inverse function we write as f to the power of minus 1 of x is equal to 3 minus x over 2 okay so there's various ways that you'll see people answering this question some people will leave it as in this form make x a subject and then at the end replace the x with the y um, i prefer not to do that because sometimes you forget to change x from the y at the end it's better for you to, I think, change it right in the beginning so you, you won't be able to forget. Okay, if that's the first thing you do, you won't forget at the end. That's um, that's one little uh, step. Another thing is some people like to use what are called flowcharts. So they think they think to, other, to themselves, what is the first thing that happened to x in this operation? So the first thing that happened to it, of course, is, if you think about bid mass, it's the multiplication. So the x first was multiplied by negative 2, so it became negative 2x. And then the next thing that's happened to it, you've added 3 to it. So you ended up with minus 2x plus 3, or you can say 3 minus 2x. Okay, when we take the inverse, we start from the opposite side, and we start with the x on this side, and we do the opposite operations in the opposite order. So the opposite or the inverse of, of adding 3 is taking away 3. So you have x minus 3, and the opposite of um, multiplying by minus 2 is dividing by negative 2. So you end up with x minus 3 over negative 2, which is the same as 3 minus x over 2 is how I wrote it. Okay, if we had um, at this stage subtracted 3 from both sides and divided by minus 2, we would get exactly the same as this. This just looks neater, that's all. Alright, so that's using flowcharts, 
which is also a, a method you could use. I prefer to uh, use the algebraic method, but that's perfectly fine, uh, especially for simple examples like this. So there's uh, part B done of this question. Now for part C, it says find x when g g x equals 7. All right, so I have the question, you know, the, the functions copied down here, so you don't have to keep on scrolling up and down. So what, is this, what does g g x mean? Okay, what's the difference between g g x equals 7? So here we have an equation. We have to find what this is equated to 7 and then solve the equation for x but what does ggx means well it's the same thing as for example fgx except you have to put the function g instead of putting it into another function put it into itself so basically you've got to take the function g which is 2x plus 3 and you got to replace now here we're not replacing a number but we're replacing an expression we're replacing this x here with 2x plus 3 the x in the function g so instead of 2x plus 3, you have 2 times whatever's in this bracket. So if this, was, if this was g5, you would put 2 times 5 plus 3. If this was g8, you put 2 times 8 plus 3. If it was g minus 7, you'd put 2 times minus 7 plus 3. So whatever's in this bracket, whether it's a letter, if it was, for example, b, you put 2 times b plus 3. Okay, But in this case, it's 2x plus 3. So instead of the x, I'm going to write 2x plus 3 and then plus 3. So I've replaced this x with this whole function. I've put 2x plus 3 inside this function. That's ggx. Okay, so that's what ggx is, and we've got to then equate it to 7. So we have 2 times 2x plus 3 plus 3 equals 7. We have to solve this equation. So we have 4x plus 6 and plus 3 equals 7. So 4x plus 9 equals 7. So 4x equals 7 minus 9. So 4x equals negative 2, in which case x is equal to negative 2 over 4, which is equal to negative a half. So that is the answer to this question. Okay, so there's the answer to part C. Okay, now for part D of this question. It says find x when the inverse of the function h is equal to 5. Okay, so if we look now at the function h, it's this one over here. And at first glances, it's like, okay, let's find the inverse of function h, which is in fact something not very easy to do. Because if we start finding the inverse of function h, we see h of x equals 2 to the power of x. So we say let y equal 2 to the power of x. Swap the x and y around, so x equals 2 to the power of y. How do we make y the subject? Well, we don't know in IGCSE. We know in A-level, okay, we, we need to take the, um, we can use logarithms, okay, which is something out of the scope of the IGCSE syllabus. So there must be a way within our syllabus that we can answer this question, and there is. Okay, there's a variety of different ways we could use. Um, now, one of the things that we learnt from the very start of algebra is that when we want to um, solve an equation, we basically do the inverse operation of what's being done if we want to get rid of something. So for example, we have x minus 3 equals 5. We want to get rid of the minus 3, so we, do the, we, we basically do the inverse of minus 3 on both sides of the equation. You can think of it like that. So we have to add 3 to this side of the equation. And we have to add 3 to this side of the equation. It's an inverse operation. And we end up with x equals 8. Similarly, if we have something like you know, 4x equals 12. Here we want to find what x is. What's happening to the x is being multiplied by 4. What's the inverse of multiplication by 4? Division by 4. So we apply the inverse to both sides of the equation. So we have this side of the equation to divide by 4 this side of the equation we also divide by 4 and we're left with x equals 3 okay so those are some of the things that we have uh, learnt okay and it, it goes with many the, the inverse for example we want to find what x squared is um, what x is we get x squared equals 36 so the inverse of squaring is finding the square root so we apply the inverse of on both sides okay so we end up with x equals plus or minus 36 all right so that same thing can apply here. I want to get rid of 
the function h of x and i want to be left with just x now the inverse of the function h is inverse of function of h and the inverse of the inverse is the original function the, the inverse of the original function is the inverse the inverse of the inverse is the original function so what i can do here is if i want to get rid of the original function I can basically take the inverse function of this side of the equation. When I find the inverse function of h of h of x, the basically the, the, the functions both cancel each other out, I'll be left with x equals. Okay, so I must also do the same thing to the other side. Okay, I must sorry, in this case, we're starting off with the equation the inverse of h of x equals 5. So if I want to get rid of the inverse of the function, I must take the original function of both sides, h of h inverse h of x, the h of the inverse of h of x. When I apply, when I, when I basically um, apply the original function to the inverse function, they cancel each other out, leaving with x. So I must do the same on the other side. I must take the 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 function h of this side which is 5 so i must find h of 5 h of 5 is basically taking 2 to the power of x and replacing the x with 5 so x equals 2 to the power of 5 which is 32 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 32 we should know what 2 to the power of 5 is if you're not sure you know you got 2 to the power of 1 is 2 2 to the power of 2 is 4 2 to the power of 3 is 8 2 to the power of 4 is 16 2 to the power of 5 is 32 2 to the power of 6 is 64, and so on. You can carry on. So you should know your powers of 2, especially. Um, you know, it's important for you to be able to do these questions quickly, all right, without the calculator. So x equals 2 to the power of 5, which is 32. Right, so that's a nice way of dealing with this question. When you're not able to algebraically find the inverse, okay, of the original function, you say, okay, let's just apply the original function to the inverse. They cancel out and you're left with just the x. So you do the same thing that you did on this side to that side. You take the function h of this side. That means you've got to put 5 inside the function h, which is 2 to the power of 5, and you've got your answer. Alternatively, there's another way of thinking about it. If you want to solve inverse h x equals 5, first of all, think about what would you do if you were solving h of x equals 5. If you were solving h of x equals 5, you would take the original function, which we can call y equals 2 to the power of x, and you would say, okay, let's replace the y with 5. The 5 would go here. And you'd have to solve the equation 2 to the power of x equals 5, and which, in fact, we don't really know how to do right now until we learn, learn logarithms. But that's not what we have to do here. Because this is, not the, the, this is not the original function. This is the inverse function. So when you put the inverse function in here, it doesn't take the place of the y. It takes the place of the x instead. Okay, so when you, do, when you have the inverse, you do the opposite. You don't put it where it normally would go if it was h of x, you put it in the other place, which is where the x is. So you end up with y equals 2 to the power 5, which is going to be 32. It's because the x and y's, you can think about it, as like when we found the inverse originally, they swap around, they swap places. So instead of the y going here, it goes there. Okay, just like when we started to try to find the inverse, we ended up with 2 to the power of y. So the y, which this would be, goes instead of the x instead because of the inverse and you get your answer. So there's two different ways of kind of thinking about it. This is a nice neat way of thinking about it, the one that we did originally, okay, and that's fine. Alright, so that's the answer to question part D and that concludes this question from this um, specimen paper. So other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear at the top of the screen at the end of this video. Other questions from the topic of functions from the new syllabus which is basically the same as old syllabus really in terms of the only difference is we don't have a calculator now um, and you have here also the playlist from the old functions questions okay which are all still relevant okay except that we just use calculators in a lot of cases and then we can uh, subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon